Welcome back again. Welcome to another exciting episode of Carving the Divine TV. My name is Yoshiro Seki. I'm a director, writer, and the producer of the documentary Carving the Divine. Carving the Divine is about the Buddhist sculptors of Japan, and I'm ready to present it for the first time in the world. But before I do so, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce basic concepts of Buddhism and the history of Buddhism so that when you guys finally watch my documentary, you guys can watch it at the maximum value. Today, finally, we're going to make it happen. We're going to be talking about the uh, uh, Jodoshu. Yes, we've been waiting for this for a long time. And I invited somebody who can talk about the Jodoshu like no other people can. So I would love to introduce to you uh, Reverend Taijun Kasahara. Welcome to, welcome to our show. My name is Taijun Kasahara. I'm grateful and honored to have the opportunity to speak to you all. I'm a Jodoshi priest who grew up in a Buddhist family Though they are not very religious, my father was an office worker. In Japan, there has been a Danka system since Edo period. Under the Danka system, all the common people each belong to a family temple and support their temple for generations. The chief priest of Buddhist temples is, in many cases, a hereditary profession even now. I am in a minority because I was not born in a temple. I became interested in Buddhism when I was 21 years old. And when I was 31, I quit my job and became a disciple of the chief priest of my family temple, a Jodoshu temple. I became a Jodoshi priest with authorized qualification afterwards. I learned Buddhist studies at Bukkyo University in Kyoto. In 2005, I opened a new temple in Tama City in Tokyo. I am the chief priest of the temple in Kaya now, and I'm also spreading the wonderful teaching of Jodoshu through the internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. We want to hear all about it today. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, uh, Reverend, what is Jodoshu? And what is the core teaching of Jodoshu? Yes. Uh, there are several traditions of Pure Land Buddhism, also in Tibet, China, Taiwan and Vietnam. We belong to the lineage of the teachings of Zendo Daishi or Master Shantao of China and Honen Shonin of Japan. There are 13 sects and 56 subsects in Japanese traditional Buddhism. Jodoshu is one of the main 13 sects. The purpose of Pure Land Buddhism is, as well as other sects of Buddhism, to release people from the endless circle of sufferings and to bring them to Nirvana, the ultimate happiness. However, it is very difficult for us to attain Buddhahood in the present life. So we aim for birth in the Western pure land of ultimate bliss when we die and subsequent attainment of Buddhahood in the Buddha land. We deeply devote ourselves to Amida Buddha, who is the founder of the pure land. And the most important thing for us is to call the name of the Buddha which is a practice of Nembutsu. This teaching is based on the three Pure Land Sutras and Master Shantao's interpretation on them. Mm. Mm. That sounds like a very deep. So can, can you tell us a little bit of history of Jodoshu? 
Yes. Before Honen Shonin, Pure Land Buddhism had already been introduced to Japan. Some monks meditated on the Pure Land and Amida Buddha and chanted names at the same time. One day, Honen Shonin, being guided by the writings of Zendo Daishi, or Master Shantao, realized that one only have to practice Nembutsu to be born in the Pure Land, that Nembutsu is the best practice and no other practices are needed, and that this is what Amida really means, Sakyamuni Buddha and other Buddhas really mean. Honen Shonin then established a new sect, Jodo Shu, when he was 43 years old in 1175. He spread the teaching of exclusive Nembutsu until he died at the age of 80 in 1212. After he died, the order split into some schools. Of those schools, Chinzei Ha, Seizan Ha, Jodo Shinshu, and Jishu still survive today. Chinzei Ha is today's Jodo Shu that directly hangs on the torch of teachings of Honen Shon. Wow, so uh, you told me a little bit about the uh, Honen Shonin, Reverend Honen. Uh, who is Reverend Honen? And uh, why did he leave Tendai Buddhism? Well, maybe I should have said, why did he leave him uh, Hiezan, uh, Mount Hiei? Please tell us. Yeah. Honen Shonin was born in Okayama Prefecture in Japan. His father was killed in his childhood, and before long, he became a disciple of Bodaiji Temple and joined the Tendai sect in Mount Hiei. He was called number one for knowledge and will there. However, he secluded himself from the monk society and devoted himself to his studies for the salvation of all beings. Thereafter, he met the teaching of Zendo Daishi, as I said, left Mount Hiei, where the monks were secularized at the time. I don't know Honen Shoni really left Tendai, but anyway, he left Mount Hiei, that is head temple of Tendai sect. He then went to Kyoto city and spread his teachings to the people there. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. So he was, I heard he was living in the time of a, a degenerated age, Mapo. Uh, what is Mapo? Yes. The theory of Mapo, the latter days of Buddhism says that a certain era will come when no one will be able to attain nirvana in the lifetime, when there will be no monks who observe the Buddhist precepts well, because a long time will have passed since Sakyamuni Buddha's death then, and Buddha Dharma will have no longer a power. It was said in the period of Honen Shonin that the Mappo age had already come in 1052. Therefore, with the historical background of Mappo, Pure Land Buddhism became the only hope for the people. Turning to the present situation in the world, materialism, Money worship and uh, trend away from religion have been spreading. I should say that we are actually 
in the middle of Mappo. Mm, you mean right this moment too? Yes. Wow. Mm. So, uh, Reverend, you mentioned us about the uh, Amida Nyorai, uh, but we, we don't know anything about Amida Nyorai, but I think I have a statue of Amida Nyorai. Uh, I have a standing one, and I think you have a, a sitting one. So, yes. what is Amida Nyorai? Please tell yes. us. Yes. Amida is a Buddha among many Buddhas in Mahayana Buddhism who had attained enlightenment far earlier than Sakyamuni Buddha did. When Amida was still a practitioner, a Bodhisattva, he made a vow that he would receive all the people who wish to be born in his Buddha land and call his name. And then he attained Buddhahood. Therefore, his vow became an unbreakable promise. And we, named reciters, will surely be born in the Pure Land by the power of Amida. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, so in that means, uh, in Jodoshu tradition, uh, you guys only venerate uh, Amida, uh, or we can venerate other Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. Yes, Jodoshu only venerate Amida and Yorai. Mm, I can say so. We worship first Amida because he will surely receive us who chant his name. Even if we can't observe the precepts of Buddhism, nor do meditation practice. We worship Sakyamuni Buddha, of course, and other Buddhas, but we venerate Amida first because Sakyamuni told us to do so and chant the name of Amida. Mm, very, very interesting, very fascinating. So, what is uh, Amida's original vow then? Yes. The word original means that the vows were made when Amida was still a practitioner, when he was at a previous stage of enlightenment. The 18th vow among 48 vows preached in Sutra of Immediate Life is the most important. The 18th vow says that when I attain Buddhahood, if all sentient beings in the 10 directions who aspire in all sincerity and faith to be born in my land and call my name even 10 times are not born there, then may I not attain supreme enlightenment. Uh, it's a little long sentence. Once again, when I attain Buddhahood, if all sentient beings in the 10 directions who aspire in all sincerity and faith to be born in my land and call my name even 10 times are not born there, then may I not attain supreme enlightenment. This is the 18th vow. As I said, the Bodhisattva attained the supreme enlightenment afterwards and became Amida Buddha. So this vow became an unbreakable promise. Mm. Wow. Well, uh, so anybody who calls Amida's name can be born in Pure Land. Yes. Yes, that's right. Wow. So uh, I heard there's a concept of a jiriki and a tariki in Japanese language. Yes. Uh, I, heard, I heard tariki is more important than jiriki. Uh, yes. But we don't know what that means. Please tell us. Yes. 
ji means self and riki means power therefore jiriki means uh, self power uh, jiriki means uh, going up the stairs to enlightenment step by step through observing the precepts doing meditation doing ascetic practices and accumulating virtues by self-power step by step we think that is almost impossible for us to walk the path of jiriki because uh, very few excellent practitioners can reach nirvana through jiriki in this age of mappo. On the other hand, ta of tariki literally means other. Therefore, tariki, tariki is translated into other power. Other here means not me, but Amida. By Amida's power, we will be surely led into the pure land. This is the path of Tariki. We don't underestimate the Jiriki practice that other, other Buddhist sects teach. Every teaching of Sakyamuni Buddha is very precious. However, we, Nemtri practitioners, think that we are not made of good stuff. So we can do nothing but rely on the teachings of Jodoshu, the path of Tariki. Wow. Wow. That's very deep. Interesting. So uh, what is Nembutsu Zen? So what is Namu Amidabutsu? We don't know anything. Okay, Nem in Japanese originally means keeping something in one's mind. And Butsu means Buddha. Therefore, Nem Butsu originally means keeping Amida Buddha in one's mind. Zendo Daishi interpreted the name Butsu as calling the name of Amida, saying Namu Amida Butsu. Honen Shonin and Jodoshu follow Zendo Daishi's interpretation. So we think of name Butsu as reciting Namu Amida Butsu. Namu means taking refuge in or paying respect to or putting my faith in. Mida of Amida means measuring. You know the word meter. One meter, two meters. Initial A means no. Therefore, Amida means immeasurable or infinite. Sutras say that the light emitted by Amida and the life of the Buddha are both immeasurable. I put my faith in Amida Buddha, whose emitting light and life are immeasurable. This is the meaning of Namu Amida Buts. However, when chanting a name Buts, we don't need to think of that meaning of Namu Amida Buts. It is enough to chant names wholeheartedly. This is the teaching of Hon and Shoni. Wow. I'm very, very impressed with the teaching. Uh, but you have been uh, telling us uh, pure land. You have been yeah. telling us about the pure land there, pure land there, but what, what is a pure land and where is it? The pure land is a peaceful Buddha land where there is no suffering. The pure land is full of truth, good, 
beauty and amid its light. Many bodhisattvas and pure practitioners are there. According to the sutras, the pure one is in the far west. As many as 10 trillion Buddha lands away, it is not that when astrophysics progresses, the pure land will be found someday, but that it is important for us to lead a religious life with such religious and psychological orientation is the idea that Amida and the Pure Land really exist in the West, not just symbols. That's my understanding. Wow, wonderful. Uh, yes, some people get confused between Jodo Shu and Jodo Shinshu. They sound almost exactly the same, at least to the Westerners. So I know this could be a very sensitive issue, but if you could tell us some of the differences between uh, Jodo Shu and Jodo Shinshu, I think it will be helpful for the people who want to learn about uh, this tradition. Yes. Honen Shonin emphasized the importance of both faith and practice. The same applies to Jodo Shu. Jodo Shinshu says that the direct reason to be born in the Pure Land is by people's faith. Compared with Shinshu, it may seem that Jodo Shu emphasizes practice of Nembutsu more than faith, or that the faith of Jodo Shu is not thorough enough. On the contrary, from the viewpoint of Jodo Shu, we sometimes wonder if we will be able to have such true faith as emphasized by Shinshu. We think that the faith grows together with the practice of Nembutsu. We often say 10 times recitation of Nembutsu together, like this. Doshoju nem namu amidabu 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 tsu namu amidabu This is Doshoju uh, nem 10 times recitation of Nembutsu. All together now. Namu Amidabu, 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 Namu Amidabu. In addition, we chant names together in rhythm of with Mokugyo, like this. Namu Amidabu, Namu Amidabu, Namu Amidabu, Namu Amidabu, Namu Amidabu, Namu Amidabu, Namu Amidabu. Jodo Shinshu does do those things. On the other hand, Shinshu emphasizes Buddhist sermon more than Jodo Shu does because the sermon encourages followers' faith very much. Uh, we might say that Jodo Shu walks the path with people together. And on the other hand, Shinshu emphasizes the true faith, the personal religious experience. Another difference between Jodo Shu and Shinshu is echo, transfer of merit. Jodo Shu priests transferred merit of Nembutsu 
for the repose of dead souls in the memorial service. Jodo Shinshu doesn't do that because they regard the transfer of merit as Jiriki practice. Uh, I think uh, other different, may, there will be many other differences, uh, but uh, I talked uh, the main difference today. Wow, thank you. Definitely, we have a better understanding of Jodoshu and uh, uh, some of the differences between Jodoshu and Jodo Shinshu. Wonderful. Oh, so. so, wonderful. So, yes. Uh, we would love to know about you. Uh, please tell us what's going on in your world right now. And if you have a website or uh, some social media information uh, you can share with us, that'll be wonderful. Thank you. The wonderful teaching and practice of Jodo Shu are not well known outside Japan or Nikkei communities. So I have been doing some missionary works through the internet since six years ago. We have website uh, www.rinkayan.jp slash twitter.com slash rinkayan uh, and Facebook www.facebook.com slash rinkayan. Also, we have YouTube channel and email address. Uh, please see the description. Mm, wonderful. Okay. Yes, we, I'm going to put the, all that uh, description in the description box. So make sure you guys to check it out. So awesome. It was a great day. Uh, yes, if you think uh, this information is useful, make sure to subscribe my YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and like me on my Facebook, because that's how I do it in the 21st century. So thank you very, very much, Reverend, for coming here and talk to us about the Jodoshu. Namo Abhidabutsu. Namo Abhidabutsu. Thank you very much.